Okay, Facebook has denied a request from Joe Biden's campaign to take down an ad by Donald Trump's camp. Now, the video accuses the former vice president without evidence of behaving corruptly in his conduct towards Ukraine during the Obama administration. Facebook says it's not taking the ad down because it believes in, quote, free expression and respect for the democratic process. The company says its policy is not to fact check political ads or posts. Now, my next guest blew the whistle on the data scandal involving Facebook and Cam Cambridge Analytica. He has a new book out about the experience. Christopher Wiley joins me now here live in the studio. Christopher, thanks for being here. For thanks stops. for having me. So the actual facts, if we put them as succinctly, are that Cambridge Analytica yeah. harvested and used, not sure if it was, it was likely e in an illegal way, exploited data from Facebook users. Yeah. Has any of that changed? And is it, if it hasn't, how do we change it? So, you know, one of the reasons why I wrote the book is, you know, first to tell the story of Cambridge Analytica, which is, you know, slightly Byzantine and it involves, you know, Russian operatives and data and hackers and all of that. But one of the real concerns that I have is that even though the company now has dissolved, um, you know, many of the capabilities that it built in terms of exploiting uh, people online through mm -hmm. disseminating targeted disinformation um, still exist. And what happens, you know, if, you know, China becomes the next Cambridge Analytica or if North Korea becomes the next Cambridge Analytica? Because your point has been obvious through this book. This was effective. This was incredibly effective, whether yeah. it came to the 2016 election or Brexit. Yeah, what a lot of people don't realize about Cambridge Analytica, which is what I talk about in the book, is that its origins are, you know, in a military contractor that was based in London that worked on information and psychological operations. And when I first got recruited at the company, what I was working at, you know, what I was working on was essentially looking at, you know, who is most vulnerable to being targeted by extremist organizations, um, you know, to, to fall into that trap of extremism and radicalization. And when the company got acquired by an alt-right billionaire and when Steve Bannon became my boss, that work got inverted. So we were still looking for, you know, people who were more prone to paranoid ideation, who were more prone to, you know, engaging in conspiratorial thinking, but instead of trying to mitigate radicalization, you know, the company targeted people to promote radicalization in the United States for the alt-right. It, it was incredibly subversive, and some people would say shrewd and incisive in terms of what you could do with this information, what you could manipulate. You know, you write that I did not see the contradiction in what I was doing. Some people, I mean, you know, some people point, paint you as a whistleblower. Some point to you as a person who should have known better. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things I do talk about in the book is that uh, you know, I fell for the allure of, you know, Facebook's mantra of, you know, move fast and break things. Um, so a lot of engineers get really focused in their work and it's cool to build things that can become powerful. But what I didn't think about when I was doing my work at Cambridge Analytica was what was it that I may be breaking? And if the consequence, you know, of that, of that ideology of that mantra is, you know, we break, we end up breaking elections or the functioning of our public forum, um, you know, that's something that I think a lot of engineers should be considering, particularly if they work at companies like Facebook. Right, but, but what guard rails do we put in now to make sure that I don't have to count, quite frankly, on someone like you, who was 24 years old when all of this started, to be protecting and not exploiting my data? What do we do? I mean, right now, there's no rules in place. The United States is one of the few countries in the developed world that has no national privacy legislation. And currently, we are relegating the security of you know, the American democratic process to a private company. Um, and we are hoping that they are honest and transparent, even though what we've seen in the past is that Facebook has typically obfuscated and hidden until they've been forced out by journalists to admit the problems that are happening on their platform. One of the, you know, I think it's quite telling that you know, even though um, Silicon Valley often talks about you know, their platforms as services, and they talk about terms and conditions and opting in, the top job titles are you know, usually engineer and architect. Yep. They are building architectures. And when you think about how society looks at architecture and engineering in the physical world, we have building codes for safety. You know, if you were an architect and you built a building without fire exits, you would, it would be inexcusable to say, I put some terms and conditions at the door, 20,000 words that people should read before they walk into the building. They agreed to the architecture of my building. 
that would be ridiculous. Yeah, but the and 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 the, the the thing that's really important, I think, for people to understand is that you know the internet is part and parcel of modern day life. You know, we we check our phones, you know, minute by minute. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing that you see is your phone. The right. last thing that you see is your phone during the day. And so I hope that you know this serves as a as a warning to people that we need to okay. actually take it seriously. Christopher Wiley, I want to thank you for coming in. The book is Cambridge Analytica and the Plot to Break America. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.